Welcome to Downtown St. Catharines, an up-and-coming destination for arts, culture, and all things delicious. And the vanguard of flavor? The Merchandale House. Since before hipsters were mustache deep in Ontario craft beer, these trailblazers were crafting a medley of handmade beers from their rustic brew pub. These pioneers have solidified themselves as a downtown staple with their insanely good grub and unique and overflowing beer list, which makes them the perfect educators for today's topic, the art of the flight. But first, donuts. Look at them in there, they're like magic little elves deep frying happiness. Magical little elves. You're making the window all dirty. Come on, it's not an aquarium. What happened to your diet there, Nick? Well, these are vegan. You know that vegan doesn't mean they're completely healthy, right? Then why do they call it a vegan diet? <laughs> Go nuts, then. Donut, mind if I do. I've heard all of the donut puns. Well, that would explain the glazed look on your face. Glazed, like a donut. OK, OK. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we just get two of everything? Thank you, you're an angel. I am having a love affair with this mango brulee. How was that birthday cake? Yeah, it's like a childhood birthday party without the disappointment of nobody showing up. Hmm. So, uh, did we really have to get two of everything, guys? Really? Yeah, we got to share with our buddies at the merch. Why, you think we should have gotten three of everything? You're destined for diabetes. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Come bearing gifts. Hey, how's it going, boys? You brought me donuts. But no outside food or beverage allowed, I'm sorry. It's in time now. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to confiscate those, okay? Oh, it's all right. I'll keep them behind the bar for you. Safe and sound. <laughs> I don't like that. I'm John from the Merchant Ale House, uh, one of the three owners. We got this place started 19 years ago. I'd been making beer since I was probably 16 years old, doing it in my buddy's basement behind the furnace where his parents never found it. it wasn't the greatest product, but it spurred that hobby up for me that, you know, I'd wanted to make better and better beer ever since, so, and we continue to strive for that even now. You got good head retention on yours, yeah? All right, here we are, boys, one board. Awesome. Thank you kindly. And one donut. Mmm, oh, it's so good. <laughs> I wanted the cookie dough. Blonde bombshell. Cheers, boys. Cheers. What I love about the blonde bombshell is it's very approachable. It's an easy drinking beer. For someone who's not really familiar or doesn't really like craft beers and they like the mass produced stuff, they come into a place like this and they don't know what to order because they see all these crazy names Drunken Monkey and Nitro, coffee, all this stuff, right? So, this is a good starting point. It's like, oh, this tastes familiar. It's good. I know craft beer isn't that scary now. It's got a nice light mouthfeel. Um, so, it's not something that's going to kind of overpower your taste buds. It's not going to be hard to get down if you're not used to that kind of thing. So when you use the word mouthfeel, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. It's a thing. There was a time when we opened that we'd get a table of six people in and one person would want a Cooper's Light, which we've never served, and that table would just get up and walk out. That does not happen anymore. Everyone knows a whole lot more about craft beer, which is great. It helps us find what people want to drink and get the right pint in front of the right person. Drunken Monkey. Cheers, boys. Cheers. I love my coffee in the morning. I love my chocolate at night. And this is just like a beer that kind of brings it all together for me. I think if it's, you know, your first time trying to delve into the stout world, it's a good place to start. Maybe you just like stouts. That too. Apparently, the first batch of Drunken Monkey, they wanted to do an oatmeal stout, and a monkey wrench was dropped in the batch. Now they call it the Drunken Monkey. Do they have to throw one in every time they make a new batch? Or... Well, I think it's part of the recipe, really. How's the germaphobe and you feel about that? Um, old time hockey ale. Yeah, baby. Mm. 
Now guys, this is actually an American Amber. It's the first beer that the merch ever brewed. Right. And they actually had the name before they had the beer. I feel like that's just the way craft beer is these days. You come up with a cool beer name, and then you kind of figure out how to make beer after that. Why? You need a cool name. So this is just a great beer. It's still got a lot of flavor, but smooth. Yeah, so it's a little bolder than the blonde, yep. so it's a nice like step up to sort mm -hmm. of like work your way into getting into more adventurous territory. Totally. This is the kind of beer that I can imagine after a game of hockey with the boys, kicking back and sipping on one of these. How often do you play hockey, Drew? Oh, you know, I've watched it on TV and stuff. ESB, the extra special bitter. You got that pinkies up, don't you? That's the way you got to do it. Don't these glasses make you feel like you're a giant? Like I feel massive. Oh, yeah. mm. oh no, that's amazing. I was a IPA guy through and through. And the ESB still had those same notes that satisfied the IPA lover in me, but something different to it. You require a certain palate to get to that level. Like you, when you first started drinking wheat beers and stuff, this probably wouldn't have been no. your jam. No, this isn't something I would drink. But as I refined my palate and you know, had a, a, grew a much better affinity for, for for beer, you know, I definitely added this to my repertoire. Uh, <laughs> And it's uh, definitely, definitely in there now. They actually designed the merch around an English style pub, which in England, the pub is where you go, right? It brings the community together. We're always having fun. I guess part of the way you can gauge that too is how often our staff is still here after their shift late into the evening. So it's comfortable to work and it's comfortable to play. A cold, crisp beer with a group of friends on a hot, sunny day, could it get any better? Well, I guess if you like cold days, it could. That's why in Niagara, you can get the best of both worlds depending on the season. Go to NiagaraAleTrail.com to plan your next beer-cation. Blueberry wheat. Ah. Just Wait, uh, we can get you a sippy cup. You want a sippy cup? Blue bright side, now my beard smells like blueberries. Yeah, and beer. <laughs> Even though there's blueberries in it and it's a fruit beer, it really does have a, a hearty, earthy tone to it. Well, and I like that you can sip out these blueberries as you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think they ever get like the blueberries stuck in the tap lines? Maybe you should ask our donut thief. Yeah. Strawberry Blonde Rattler. Right off the top, I definitely get a strawberry nose on this one. It could be the bounty of strawberries they use in the brew. The strawberry, it's there. I wouldn't say it's subtle, but there's not that sweetness. You still have that nice bitterness to contrast it, and it's it's really refreshing. I think it's because they use actual strawberries from Simcoe County. And I could actually see a lot of non-beer drinkers liking this. This one's got a low alcohol content, which, I mean, might be a deterrent to some, but I think it's awesome for the summer. You can come in, order a pint, and still walk home in a straight line. And be refreshed. It's just like win-win. And you get your fruit intake. Uncharted Pale Ale. Oh, <laughs> buddy. Oh, oh my goodness, hop down. That is good. Mm. So the Uncharted is they're constantly changing ale. So it, it gives the brewmaster an opportunity to try different hops. Would you say that he has many options? <laughs> I think that that's the beauty of craft beer in general, is that brewers will push the boundaries to try and find something great. And sometimes that means there's some really kind of just eh, iffy beers. So even with those iffy beers that sometimes come out, there's always an audience that it appreciates I think that's the beauty of craft beers. Everybody has a different palate, right? Something that I hate, you might love, and something that you hate, I might love. That is the beauty of flights, because because you can try really radical beers in small forms. Like some of my favorite beers are actually the ones that are like super sweet dessert beers. I don't want a full pint of that. I don't even want a half pint, but do I want it as my last flight? Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of uh, uncharted territory and experimenting, what about bringing beer and coffee together? Mm -mm -mm. The Nitro Cold Brew Stout. That's fantastic. This is my absolute favorite beer. Yeah. It is so good on so many levels. Right. 
the balance in this is so good. This makes me want to find like the nearest piece of chocolate cake and nose dive into it. The, there's chocolate notes, there's coffee notes, it's a milk stout, so it's got like that smoothness to it. It's sweet. Yeah, well, it really drinks like a coffee. Uh, but you can tell with this one, uh, definitely, definitely real coffee used to flavor and it's, it. And it's brewed with the Signal Coffee. They're a local company. They roast the beans. This is the perfect lunchtime beer. Why is that? Because it doesn't leave you sleepy. Mmm. All right, how are things going here, boys? Pretty good. Fantastic. Yeah. Except, you know, it would be a little bit better if we had donuts with this cold brew stout. Ah, yes. You know, you'll get your donuts. Don't you worry. They're safe. If there are any left. <laughs> There's a couple. But listen, I'll make you a deal. I got to go change out a keg of beer. You can change that by yourself. You can get your donuts back. You can't. I get to take them. I've never changed a keg before, and that's a pretty big risk for me. Uh, I got this. I used to work at a restaurant. A gentleman's agreement. All right, you're on. That's just why I can't have jalapenos anymore. Drunken monkey, please. Sure, pal. So, how'd it go, buddy? Chris, where are the donuts? Good evening, Merchant Ale House. We're Charles J. Hunger, the train wreck. I wrote a song about this fine establishment, the Merchant Ale House, because we love it so much. The people, the beer, the food, everything about it. I'm going to play that song for you right now. It's called Double Plaid. Chris, where are our donuts? One drunken monkey. Quitting time to make my way down to the local bar for another time. Tales from the Ale Trail is brought to you by AE Media for website development, Treshack Enterprises, Beachwood Donuts, Brand Boulevard, and our episode sponsor, Niagara Ale Trail. Well, that double plant's the best I've had when it comes to get liquor. Pairing up with a shot of bourbon to get the job done quicker. Drinking at the ale house, laughing at the hipster. Did you see that guy downstairs in the bathroom with no pants on? <laughs>